Today, we're gonna to be looking at a self-publishing KDP niche on Amazon that's both very popular and very profitable with one publisher making somewhere between two to four thousand dollars per month in pure profit off one book alone so if you're looking to to get into self-publishing or you want to start a business online using your laptop or computer from home then follow along as i show you this particular niche and how you can get started today now if you've not been to this channel before, then welcome. My name's Paul Miles, and I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it, and that's your money I'm talking about. And if you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and smash that notification bell to receive notification of when I produce more videos like this. So, what is this particular niche? Well, it's the home school planner niche, and it's designed for parents and guardians who homeschool their children. And as we'll see in a moment, it is becoming increasingly popular since the events of last year. So let's get straight into it. We're gonna just have a look at the niche, assess the niche and look at the market, look at how to create or where to get the interiors for these books from, and then look at how to market your book. That's get it ranked on Amazon. So you can get those all important sales. So let's go over to Google Trends. Now we can see here that demand is pretty steady over the last five years. And we can see this peak, which coincides with around sort of last March and April. And we all know what was happening during that time. And again, demand came down and has been pretty steady. It looks like it's just going up slightly here. If we go over to Google, and I've got a Chrome plugin installed called Keywords Everywhere, which is gonna be very useful. I'll show you uh, how useful it is uh, a bit later on in the video, but it gives us some useful data. And we can see these peaks here, which tend to occur around July, August every year with a little peak around January. So about now, we're gonna see an increase in demand for these books. So if this is a niche you're interested in getting into, now is the time to get those books created. And if we just have a look on the Google searches, just to give us an idea of the market, we can see here people are selling these homeschool planner printables on Etsy, which is an idea for making some extra income. And if we do scroll down even further, we can see that there are some of these books listed on the first page of Google from Amazon. So if you, know, you do get a book that is selling well, and it appears on that first page of Google, that's gonna mean some extra traffic for any book you, can, you create. And extra traffic means extra clicks and extra sales, which means extra money, which is what we want. So now I normally go over to Amazon when I'm assessing a niche, and I put in just a, a general root keyword here. We're gonna put in homeschool planner. Now, the important thing I'm, I want to know is, are people making sales with these books? So what I'm looking at here is what's called the best sellers rank, which is this number here, 3,349. Now what I normally look for are three or more books on the first page with best sellers ranks of less than 300,000. Uh, that's my initial criteria because if that occurs, if I do see that, it means that there are books being sold, therefore there is a market for this particular book, for this particular niche, which is good, which means I'm now interested in pursuing this further. So if we just have a look at some of the other KDP books, we've got one here, 16,000, 8,000, 20,000. So straight away, this has met the criteria for, for a niche that I am interested in publishing. Now, out of interest, what we can do is go to this book, take this bestsellers rank and put it into a book sales calculator. And, and this one I use is at tckpublishing.com. And this book is selling between 900 to 1,860 a month and is selling for $9.95, which means the profit is around $2.38, which equates to this one book a profit of $2,142 to $4,284 per month. That's pure profit. That's royalties that this particular publisher receives. And that's just from one book alone. So you can see that the potential to make money in this niche is very good. Okay, so now that we've decided that this is a profitable niche, we now need to look at 
creating these types of books. And one of the main thing in creating these types of books is the interior. So one of the most popular sites for KDP interiors is Creative Fabrica. And I just put in KDP Homeschool Planner and we can see here we've got lots of options to download. Now these can be bought individually or you can subscribe to a plan where you can get interiors, graphics, fonts, lots of resources to use uh, for the interiors of your books and on the covers of your books. And I use this a lot. And I think at the moment they are still doing this special offer where you can get the first month access to everything for just $1. After that, I think it goes up to $19 a month. Now, BookBolt does have free interiors. They didn't have anything specific to homeschooling, but I did notice they had some interiors related to planners like this monthly planner here. It may be possible that you could download some of these interiors um, related to the to planners and maybe join them all together, mix them together to create an interior. One of my favorite options is Tangent Templates. Now this does cost money, it's $59 one-off payment to, to buy Tangent Templates. It's a web-based software, but they have a lot of useful resources for creating interiors. And here we have the area for creating planners and you can mix and match all these different uh, planner components to make an interior of your choice. One option is you could go to somewhere like fiverr.com and pay for someone to create a bespoke interior for you. Or the other option is to create an interior yourself using something like Adobe Illustrator, uh, Affinity Designer. You can even create them on PowerPoint or Keynote. Now, in order to make sales, we're going to need to get our books ranked on the first page of Amazon. And we're gonna to need to give our books the best chance of that happening. And we achieve that in two ways. One is in the use of keywords. That's keywords in the title of your book, keywords in the subtitle of your book, and keywords in those seven uh, keyword boxes that you fill in when you do upload your book to Amazon. If you're unsure about using keywords, I'll leave links to two videos below I've done on keywords. One, how I find keywords, and two, how I use those keywords to, to maximize the chances of being rank, ranked on the first page of Amazon. Now I say chances because you can do everything. You could have a superb cover, get all your keywords right, but it still doesn't rank. There is an element of luck involved. But as you go on, create more books, the more chance you're gonna get of you know, a good proportion of your books getting ranked if you go through the right process and do the right things. So we'll look at the keywords first and then I'll discuss the cover designs um, and give you some ideas or what I think would be useful to do in terms of helping your book get ranked. Okay, so normally when I go to Amazon, I put in a keyword. Now keywords are the words that buyers or potential buyers put into the Amazon search bar. They're what they use to search for items, in this case, books. So when we put in homeschool planner, you can see here there are these keywords on the left-hand side, and these are keywords that Amazon is suggesting. Now, these are important for two reasons. One is Amazon is telling us what people are searching for, and two, customers tend to click on these words as a kind of a shortcut to something they're looking for. So they have a double benefit. Now, what I normally do is when I'm doing keyword research is I make a note of all these keywords on the left-hand side and I put them into a spreadsheet. I also have a plugin installed called AMZ Suggestion Expander and it gives us these extra keywords here on the right-hand side. And I will also write those down uh, on a spreadsheet. Now, when I enter a keyword into the search bar and click on search, I'm looking at this number here, which is a number of search results. And this gives me an idea of the competition for a particular keyword. Now, the lower the number, the better, because there's less competition. Now, what I normally look for are keywords with search results of 1,000 or less. Now, there's nothing particularly scientific about that. It's just from my own experience of creating and publishing books over the last three years. I've found that if that number is 1,000 or less, there's uh, an increased chance of getting a book ranked on the first page. Now, if it is more than that, then you don't need to discount that keyword completely because you could get your book seen by running ads or creating an unusual or striking cover, which as I mentioned, we're gonna come on to in a moment. 
Now, another figure I want you to look at is this one here where it says volume 8,100 per month. And that's the number of Google searches per month. Now, where I get that figure from is that plugin I mentioned earlier called Keywords Everywhere. And if you pay for the credits, you get this information as well. Now, this is not vital, but if a keyword does have searches on Amazon, as we saw previously, books can appear on the first page of Google. So if there are a lot of searches on Google, it just gives a keyword a bit of extra strength. So if I'm, you know, on the fence about, you know, particular keyword or another keyword, if it does have Google searches, then I tend to favor that particular keyword. But as I said, that's not essential. You can do all this without having that information. So what I do is put in those keywords into a spreadsheet, and then I'll take each of these other keywords and again, put it into the Amazon search bar. Amazon will then give me more suggestions. Those will go onto the spreadsheet and then you can end up with a list of quite a lot of keywords. And for each of those keywords, I'll enter that into the search bar and look at the number of search results to get an idea of the competition. So you end up with a spreadsheet of keywords, next column, the Amazon search results, and then the next column, Google searches per month, if there are any. And from there, you can then start to assess the keywords. Now, what I've done is I've built up a spreadsheet of all the keywords that I found, and I found 165 in total, which is quite a lot. And again, a column for the Amazon search results and a column for the Google monthly searches. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I've got a Gumroad shop. And what I've done is I've uploaded these keywords and put a price on, on all these keywords of $1. So if you wanted to get all those 165 keywords, um, you can go to my Gumroad shop. I'll leave a link below um, in the description and you can get all those keywords for yourself or you can do it for free going through the steps that I've just explained and also explained in my video on keyword research. What I've also done is added in this list as well of single keywords. Now these are useful for filling out the seven keyword boxes on the Amazon KDP platform when you're uploading your book and all these keywords come in uh, .pdf file, .csv file and also Excel file so you can open them up in virtually any bit of software that you have. Now the other th factor to consider when getting your book ranked is the cover design. Because if we go to Homeschool Planner, you can see here a lot of the covers look very familiar. They've, you know, they've all got a pattern or flowers like these. So you may think, okay, I'm gonna copy that cover and you know, it's gonna be a popular cover, so I'm gonna get my book ranked. Now the problem is, a lot of these books have got reviews. If we look at when they were published, we can see here, this one's February 2020. Actually, this one wasn't that long ago, but this one was July 2019. So you're gonna be competing with books that were published you know, a year or two ago and have uh, quite a few reviews. So I've got that seller history. I've got that author authority as well. So it's going to be difficult to, to compete. But one way you can do that is to come up with an original cover. Now, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can even look quite amateurish. And sometimes what I do is say, think of, you know, cards, gift cards, you know, Christmas cards, that type of thing that you buy in shops or birthday cards, especially um, those sorts of designs that are humorous, sell well and can attract people's um, eye and attract their interest and get clicks on Amazon and hopefully lead on to sales. And here are a couple that I created just very quickly. I created these actually on Canva and you can see here, you know, this would appeal to anyone that likes dogs is quite amusing. And I did this one as well because uh, another popular keyword is chaos coordinator, homeschool planner. And again, looks quite amusing. Looks like a, a card you, you may buy in a shop. And this would also appeal to people that like or love cats, of which there are many. And so you can see here, you're looking completely different from the other books that are listed here. And, you know, even if you were to maybe run an ad on that type of cover, get it seen, you may be in with a good chance of getting clicks. 
And I think that would be better than trying to attack this niche by just producing a generic flowery cover because you're gonna have difficulty competing with all these with reviews and seller history. Now, if you want more information on the process of creating and uploading books to the Amazon KDB platform, then I've got this book tutorials playlist here, which is a great resource for lots of tutorials, lots of videos on that. Thank you very much for your time. It's very much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also do give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. And until next time, goodbye.